I thought I heard you talking, man. I, I thought to myself, man, he's already ahead of me, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've been smoking for like three hours getting this background ready for this show to get it for it. So, <laughs> yeah, man, looks real good. I like the Prano Pup at Corn Dogs. Got Muck Sticky up there on the background, too. We are live with Muck Sticky on Underground Wicked Radio. Yeah, what's up? How's it going? Talking about his new movie, Zebo, finally coming out. I cannot wait to see this. Man, third, yeah, yeah. a big day for us, man. Sorry if I'm turned sideways. Let me let me get kind of straightened out towards you. Hey. Uh, so, Raz, got- homie, I'll let you take a first question. I'm going to start promoting. All right. Let people so- know we are live. Muck Sticky, bro. Uh, how did you come about the name of Muck Sticky? Where did I come about the name of Muck Sticky? Man, that's uh, I, uh, it's a classic story. I'll I'll share it with you. Um, the day I wrote my first funny song, which was "Homie," was the first song I wrote that was funny. I've been in a rock band and we played a bunch of like really angry music shit, you know, and uh. I was sitting at a friend of mine's, Dr. Roach Clip, Dennis, rest in peace. Uh, and uh, I was sitting around picking a song on a guitar. It sounded kind of like a John Denver lyric, you know, and I thought to myself, man, I come from Memphis. I'm born and raised in Memphis. And I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I took like a, a John Denver sounding song and put like 3-6 Mafia lyric to it and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I wrote that song and it was, I knew exactly right then that that's what I was going to do in my life was make, you know, I, I was fresh out of college. I wasn't sure what I was going to do in my life still yet. And I knew, I knew right then and there that I was on a different mission. And, uh, so I, my favorite artist is Beck. He's my favorite. And, uh, so I was going to just call myself Muck, which is a, uh, just like a one name thing. And I was a huge fan of Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunter 2, still am. Rest in, rest in peace, Steve. And uh, oh yeah. So uh, I was just he said the word muck on his show early 2000. And um, when uh when I came up with this name late maybe 99. Uh, anyway, and so I just was gonna call myself Muck, and I was driving home, and I heard the word sticky in a song on the radio. And I thought, man, actually, what on the radio was in my tape deck. It was yeah. Dre's The Chronic 2001 tape. Anyway, yeah. uh, and uh, I heard Snoop Dogg say some of that real sticky, icky, icky, put it in the air. And I was like, dude, that's my last name right there. Stick, stick, stick. And it just clicked. So, oh, yeah. yeah. That's what's up, man. <laughs> I know in uh, the interview I had uh, with you three years ago, um, I guarantee people, new to people tuning in that I've introduced your music to want to know how you got that hat. How I got that hat, the orange hat. <coughs> orange hat yeah. there. Um, man, it this was like right after one of my first <coughs> actually, actually, I hadn't even played a show yet. Uh, this was right before one of my first show, my, my first show which was a battle of the bands at, in Memphis. Um, I was at this girl's house and she had just had a Halloween party. And I saw that hat sitting in the corner and I had, j- this was shortly after I'd come up with the name Muck Sticky and maybe a month or two. And uh, I'd written a couple of songs and recorded a couple of songs. And I thought, man, I, I like that hat right there. I'm going to wear that when I play my show. And she was like, yeah, you can have it. I don't know who left it here. And I was like, okay, thanks. So somebody somewhere left it at a party and it became what it is. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So let's start, let's start taking some questions about this movie, man. I am interested. Okay. Um, how, how did you come up with a storyline for this movie? Um, well, a lot of it's based on my personal life, my real life. Real, real experiences. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be turning it sideways, y'all. I'm trying to you're good, you're good. It's over here, and I'm having a tough time doing it. Uh, uh, but um, I um, back in 2006, uh, I met a filmmaker, Craig Brewer, 
And <laughs> asked me the question, uh, if I was going to make a movie about my life, what would it be about? And it really just like made me wonder about that. And so I thought, well, I'll sit down and see if I can write a movie about, you know, some experiences in my life. And uh, over the course of 10 years or so, I slowly developed it, but never really had any real potential of getting it made. And uh, then in late 2015, going into 2016, uh, I was living on the beach in Florida and I was eating a lot of mushrooms and going out of my kayak every day and asking myself, you know, what are the undone things in life? Uh, a lot of personal introspect and reflection. And the movie was the biggest undone, you know, thing that I hadn't ever completed or finished. You know, I'd written it to a certain degree and it was a finished story at that time. But then my mom and I sat down together and started rewriting it in uh, early part of 2016, developed it for most of that year and then came back to Memphis and began shooting in 2017, early 2017, along with the help of some really awesome people here in Memphis. Mm -hmm. Now, Raz, when you were watching the trailer, you had a good question for him. <laughs> yeah, brother, what was it like working with Jerry the King Lawler like that? Like, oh man, kind of interested on this character from this trailer that I've seen, bro. Man, he is so cool, man. I've known Jerry for a long ass time. He's he's a uh, uh, sorry, let me let me let me move my camera around here, maybe make it a little <laughs> more. See, that would probably be better if I if I just kind of hold it right there, maybe. Is that cooler? No, that's not cooler. <laughs> I don't know how to hold this thing here. Uh, maybe I need to put it back down. Uh, <laughs> sorry, man. I'm having fun tonight, man. I'm in a good mood. I can't tell you guys, like, this movie is like 13 years of my life that have been hung up. And I just sent the the thing off to the, to the manufacturer. I just got the thing from them today saying the DVDs are coming back. I'll have DVDs in my hand Monday. I'll be emailing everything out or mailing everything out to everybody. And, uh, uh, man, I'm just so excited. So I'm in a great mood. Uh, working with Jerry Lawler was pretty freaking crazy, man. Uh, like I said, I've known Jerry for a long time. My buddy, Lil Hollywood, used to wrestle with him back in the day. So I used to go a lot of the Memphis wrestling and stuff, mm -hmm. um, old school stuff back at the local TV stations and everything. And then, um, uh we uh I, I ran into him on the golf course uh seven or eight years ago and uh he he knew who i was i know who he was of course and we got to talking uh became friendly played the rest of the round of golf together and then uh just kept in touch over the years and then when we decided we were going to make the movie i, I said i want to make it with you know all memphis cast of people and um uh I called Jerry up, man. I was just like, hey, man, would you be down to play a part in this movie we're going to make here in Memphis? And he was like, absolutely, man. Just send me the script. And uh, so I sent him the script, and uh, he loved it. And we booked him for a day, came out, uh, came out about 1 o'clock, I guess, 12, 30, 1 o'clock. We had him for a total of about four hours he had to be somewhere at five i think that day and uh shot at one location hauled ass out to the shelby forest general store which is about 40 minutes from where i live um and then shot the rest of it there he was a total pro i did definitely had a moment uh when he was grabbing me by the back of the neck on top of the car and i just it was it was a real surreal moment. I was like, is this really happening right now? I'm making my movie with Jerry Lawler grabbing me by the back of the neck. I'm a huge Andy Kaufman fan. I, I grew up watching his stuff. Uh, and, uh, of course, I've seen the movie Man on the Moon a gazillion times. Um, and it was pretty damn cool, man. One, one of the cooler moments in my career, I must say. Hell yeah. Well, you just answered my question. What was your favorite part of making this movie? 
<laughs> well, uh, if, if you were going to ask me that question, I would say Jerry was one of the one of the best parts about it. the The best part about making the movie was working with everybody in a collaborative effort. You know, the, most of the time when I make music or videos, it's usually just me or me and one or two other people, which is great. But this, you know, we we had forty three different actors, I think, in the movie. Um, a bunch of extras, uh, and you know, I had a great team of people working with me. My mom, my friend Ricky Greenway, uh, most of the actors that aren't big celebrities are all all everybody that's in the movie is a is a close personal friend of mine in some way or another, um, and so that was really the coolest part about it was everybody coming together to make this thing happen. Hell yeah. What do you got for a question, Raz? So, uh, what would be your dream spot of performing after you've already done all these other spots? Uh, dream spot of performing, man. Uh, the one place in Memphis I've always wanted to play is the Orpheum Theater. I'm hoping we'll play a show there at some point in the next couple of years. Um, Carnegie Hall, maybe. Um, I'd really like to, uh, um, I don't know, man. I, I, I played the cannabis cup in Amsterdam. That was really like my growing up all time dream stoner venue. And I played that twice. So, right. uh, it doesn't get my, the second time I came off stage and Tommy Chong is in my dressing room, smoking out of a bong for my sponsor. And we ended up hanging out with Tommy Chong and smoking weed all afternoon uh that's probably like the best it's gonna get so i don't really know anything else is pretty much just a bonus man uh i feel just blessed to be able to play shows and i'm looking forward to getting back into playing shows again soon for sure i tried getting a special co-host on here tonight for your interview i interviewed the lizard man a couple months back and he's heard of you oh he eric that's really my good. yep and we go way back, man. We uh, uh the, the first tour I did with Saliva was a, a, a Jägermeister tour, and it had Saliva and Head PE and Breaking Benjamin and Stereo Mud and one other band. And uh, man, uh, Eric was the host. Um, dude, that dude is one of the craziest dudes of all yes, time. He, he was one of the coolest dudes of all times, too, man. Like super nice that's cool you interviewed eric man that's my boy two year, two two and a half <laughs> hours i had him on for eric was on oh yeah dude he's great man you should definitely set up another interview next time he wants to do one you tell him i'm gonna be on with him and i will we'll all do it together that would be fun as hell that sounds good man i, I will hook that up for sure i love it I'll, I'll get a hold of them um unfortunately it was audio and not video i just started back up doing video again Oh yeah, yeah. He, uh, I've, I've, he said he he would be down to be in one of my music videos. I I reached out to him a little while back, and we keep up online and stuff. And uh, so he's gonna be in a Muck Sticky music video one of these days. Oh, I cannot wait to see that. <laughs> yeah, so, cool. like it, Muck Sticky. How how is it working with your sister? Your, I mean, I this is awesome that you got your real mom and sister in this movie with you. Yeah, man, the, that was truly a blessing. You know, they, they've been part of various projects over the career. Uh, they, they both performed exceptionally well in this movie. They, uh, my sister is stole the show. She's the, in my opinion, one of the best actors in the whole thing, you know, if not the best, she, she did better than I did. I feel. And, uh, she um she was supernatural she, she didn't take much direction and it was just it, it was really easy for her she, she was really great mom my mom did great she plays a couple of different parts in the movie I'm not going to tell you which ones but uh because some people don't even figure it out <laughs> i can't wait to see that for sure so raz if you want to go ahead and take some music questions i got other ones about the movie you can swap back and forth all right bro yeah. So, uh, Muck, brother, 
What would you have for advice for upcoming artists that are trying to get into the music industry? Uh, don't try to get into the music industry. Just make music. You know, turn it into a business if if you can. You know, and, but don't try to get into the music industry because you'll waste a lot of time trying to get into the music industry. If you just do the shit, make music, make videos, put it up online for people to hear. Anybody can put their shit up for sale these days. As far as you know, CD Baby or TuneCore. There's a gazillion sites out there that you can go through to get your music published on iTunes and Spotify and things like that and make money off of it. Uh, but just do it because you love it, man, and, and enjoy it because the enjoyment of the doing it is what stands true in the long run. I look back on the times that I that I worked really hard to try to get into the business or something, you know, like reaching out to people or sending out emails or, you know, things like that. And it was just, I could have done so much more had I just kept on recording music and making songs. I'd have 40 albums instead of 20, you know what I mean? So right, <laughs> make music, you know what I mean? And if it's good, people will resonate with it and uh, they'll listen to it. Hell yeah, bro. So much sticky. Um, who produced the movies, the uh, like the clips of the movie for you? Um, I I did all the editing in the movie and and the movie trailers. Um, we have you know I have a team. My 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 mom and my buddy Ricky are both producers on the movie. I also have a good friend out in L.A. Phil Siebel, who's a movie producer out in L.A. Uh, he's a producer on the movie. Um, uh, they they've you know, of course, been influential in the creative process of it. But, you know, when it comes actually down to the sitting and clicking on things, that uh, I'm the one who did it. So, uh, oh, yeah. And that move, that, that uh, trailer came out dope. We will be playing that here in a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. We, uh, uh, we've put out a few different trailers, man. We, we got a couple more that are going to come out as well between now and, when the movie comes out, we'll be, of course, we're putting out promo clips after the movie comes out. Um, but yeah, man, this is, uh, it's been a fun project. You know, I do it just cause I enjoy doing it. You know, it's like what I was about the music, man. I just wanted to make a movie and no, and nobody was going to stop me. You know, even if I didn't have money, I was going to get it done some way or another. And I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And fortunately I had some people, come along and contribute money to our campaigns. People bought the DVDs. I had friends kick in here and there. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been blessed to have people help fund and support the process of it. Uh, but, you know, I think having that relentless spirit of, you know, I'm getting it done no matter what you tell me, even if there's roadblocks, I'm going to figure out a way around it is, is the key to anything in life, you know? It's the key to, to getting anything done in life is like, because shit doesn't matter what you do. You're going to have people say, yeah, well, or you know, not, maybe not even people say you may have circumstances or things make it look like, oh, this is impossible and make you want to think to yourself, oh, I'm just going to give up and go this route. Mm -hmm. uh, I had people tell me along the way, people that I looked up to tell me that, uh, oh, you know, after we had done made the movie, they said, oh, just put the movie up for free on youtube you're never going to get distribution you know wow. it's just a little indie film you know give up on it basically being naysayers and i was it kind of got me down for a minute but then i you know my spirit came through and said no f that we're we're sticking through until we get this thing done and put out to the people the right way and so um we're we're we'll be out on itunes google play amazon this network uh, indie film on iTunes uh, for this coming up week. And we're, uh, I think we reached number 10 overall out of all movies for the coming up week. Um, not too far behind the rocks, new movie, that rampage or whatever. Yo. Yo. Looks like a dope movie. <laughs> so, homie, do you remember when I interviewed you and Whitney Payton together? Yes, I do. I do. That was, that was a good interview. She is getting huge. I see her touring a lot now. 
is she that's cool i i i kept i've kept up with her off and on but i haven't seen anything lately my i've been like an ostrich here lately with my head buried in the pantry man i just uh uh this movie has been just an overwhelming project man i'm finally coming up for air to surface and do interview y'all are the first <laughs> real interview i've done in a long ass time man because i'm like to hear that i've yep. been doing much i i didn't even record a song last year I, I i i recorded two songs but they weren't my songs one of them was a collaboration that i did with a guy named keith sykes who plays milton who owns the general store in the movie uh, and then uh another one i did with an artist little trust who unfortunately passed away uh, a little while back uh, from a car wreck, man. Oh, wow. Uh, Sorry to hear that. He's a good artist, man. You guys will really dig Little Trust, man. He's right up y'all's alley, man. Y'all should look him up. Look up the song that I did with him called uh, Living It Up, man. I'll have to add that one to the radio. Uh, uh, what, Live It Up, I think, is just is the title of that. Living It Up is a muck sticky song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. much sticky. How about doing a new radio drop for Underground Wicked Radio? Yours has been in rotation for three years. Your old one. Just saying, this is Muck Sticky, and you're listening to DJ Snickers and Raz on Underground Wicked Radio. Yo, yo, yo! What's up, baby? It's Muck Sticky here, and you're listening to DJ Snickers and Raz on Underground Wicked Radio. Oh yeah, baby. Stay lifted. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Appreciate that. All right, Raz, let me go ahead and take another question. I'm going to start some more promo right. before we get this trailer planned. Hey, Muck brother, uh, what's the first equipment you used to record where we first started out? That's an interesting question. See, I like interesting questions like that, man. I, I've been asked, you know, how I got the name, and I know people want to know about that. It's a common question because it's such a crazy name, so I don't ever get tired <laughs> of it. But uh what equipment did i record my first shit on see that's like nobody's ever, i don't think anybody's ever asked me that uh so i i never really made music for a long time thinking that uh you had to go into a studio even when i was in the band i was like you know we're gonna have to go to a studio and pay 250 dollars an hour man i don't even know how long it's gonna take me to get one song right you know recording it all the way through and uh so i just had this you know i barely made 250 dollars a week at the time and so um i heard my at beck had been my favorite artist for you know close to a decade at that point and i read an interview somewhere that he r recorded most of his first he recorded all of his first two albums and most of his third mellow gold album or no, <laughs> or fourth album technically because there's golden feelings stereopathic soul manure one foot in the grave and mellow gold recorded most of that on in a friend's basement and in his living room on a four track recorder and i was like well man if he can do that and have it be all around the world then i can do that too and so i took some money that i had saved up and my mom gave me a little extra cash and uh went down to this music store and bought a yamaha md4s uh md data disc recorder and um it had four tracks on it but you could uh you could take two like if i recorded all four tracks i could take two of them and do what they called pinging down you 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 mix these two tracks on top of these two tracks so now track 2 is uh, is track 2 and track 4 and then track 1 is track 1 and track 3 and uh then you would have two more free open tracks that you could record on you can you can mix that down but after about three or four mixes it started sounding really muffled so you could really only get about eight total tracks all together that sounded kind of okay uh and then but then i didn't have any way to get it onto a cd or anything cds uh you know burning cds was still 
for for the most part was still kind of new at the time for the common folk <laughs> and uh, the common folk and um, <laughs> we grew up on eight track and records I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> well you know i didn't grow up on eight track but i did grow up on vinyl and then cds when i was a teenager you know cds were introduced i remember my first cd i ever got was ugly kid joe's as ugly as they want to be album Hell yeah. yeah but uh anyway um uh, <clears throat> so i went to a friend of mine's house and we exported those songs out of that four track recorder onto his computer into a, uh, an mp3 file and then burned it on a little cheap two dollar 95 cent recording uh disc recording software thing <laughs> actually no that was the intake thing we had to play the stuff in through the 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 line in on the on the computer and record it as an audio track and we didn't just transfer it, it we, we had to record we had to click record and you could see the little bars going and you <laughs> the whole thing and click stop and then take that file and burn it on to a, a cd and then i i started going around burning cds and taking those little uh label stampers that you could print onto like the printed sheet that was a sticker and you could they had this little platform thing you put the cd on it and you put the label with the hole on the label over this one little part and push down and it sealed it to the disc kind of evenly sometimes it didn't seal it though sometimes mm. it would give it a, a crease and it wouldn't even work in a cd player so you'd have to rip the whole thing off scrape it off man it was, it was a lot of work man putting music out back in the day man today's generation that clicks record and exports it and puts it up online in 10 minutes man like y'all realize how good you got it man right <laughs> it's a lot easier to record music now with all the programs yeah. they have out i struggle man in the studio man you have no idea about putting in work in the studio I'm <laughs> not discredit anybody's art artistry because artistry is oh, yeah. but <laughs> actually you ain't stamped some paper labels on your printed labels from that you printed off your desktop computer <laughs> or uh, cut, cut labels out and folded them into a cassette tape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to get some uh, underground wicked radio shirts here made soon. I'm going to have to send you one. You got one of the old ones from uh, Muser Nation days, man. Yeah, I do, man. I do. Um, I, I still wear it occasionally. I, I don't get out and about as much as I in the last couple of years as I used to and promote and support things like that. I, I've been kind of a hermit the last couple of years, to be quite honest, because this movie is a totally different process than making music and touring and things like that. Uh, it's been a change, complete change of pace in my life. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, though, I will say. Uh, it's been, I've, been, I've had a quiet, kind of a quiet couple, three years. Even though I've been, you know, kept up with people online and stuff, man, it's been kind of a a, a chill, chill way of being, and I, I really enjoy it, man. I'm looking forward to going back down to the beach again and uh, writing the next movie. I'm gonna do Heck that. yeah. I'm gonna do that this winter, man. So all y'all go download this movie or buy a DVD or something, and uh, and we'll put out a next, next year for you. I'm getting a physical copy because I got a lot of friends that are going to come over and watch it. I'm going to play a radio drop for you, Mook Sticky, and then we're going to play your trailer. Sounds good. So check this out. <laughs> Move some stuff around in the studio on the cords being a pain in the butt. Okay, so that did not work out as plans. Or as That's okay, man. question. <laughs> I had technology problems, man. You gotta keep going until you figure it out. Yeah. So much if you had uh if you had a unlimited supply of funds, who all would you want to be in your next movie? 
Man, who all would I want to be in my next movie? Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I got my producers over here sitting next to me. Who do we want in the next movie? You know, this the, it's the funny thing. It's, it's funny you ask that because we had access to a couple of pretty decent stars and could have gotten a couple of pretty decent decent name actors for this movie. Uh, but <clears throat> to be quite honest, um, I think I think actors that aren't hugely famous are better in movies for me because I uh, <clears throat> I I believe them more if if I don't recognize them from a lot of other stuff. You know, like if it's right. somebody that I've never seen, a bunch of people I've never seen in, in a scene, I'm more likely to engage in the movie and get lost in the movie which is the point of movies it's not to sit there and go oh, that's brad pitt and so and so and so and so pretending to be this character you know you're yeah, supposed man. to fully invest yourself in the story and um so i don't know man i would probably go back to some of my older favorite classics and pull out people that you don't see much anymore in movies huh <laughs> yeah, Thank you. Sorry. Right, now let me try playing this again for you. See if this is gonna be. This is the Lizard Man. The Lizard Man. You're listening to me with DJ Stickers on Underground Wicked Radio. If you want to find out more about the Lizard Man, yeah, that's me. I'm talking about myself. The third person. You go to thelizardman.com. Thelizardman.com. Got to put that look good in the front of it. So you get some weird hope nonsense from South Carolina. Thelizardman.com. That was a dope interview with Eric, man. Yeah, actually. I actually met Eric in person. We used to live in the same city together, Plattsburgh, New York, before he became the Lizard Man. I knew him. Really? Yep. We got uh, I got my Hatchet Man tattoo. He was just getting some scales on his neck. He didn't have his teeth done. He didn't have his tongue um, or the implants over his eyes yet. Wow, that's cool, man. <laughs> we got that was bef that was before I met him, man. Because when I met him, he was completely green uh teeth fork tongue and all had cricket the snake mm -hmm. uh and uh would bring cricket out during his shows and let her crawl yeah. up his nose and down out his mouth uh oh, yeah. then he would uh he man he did this crazy thing i don't know if y'all ever saw it or asked him about it but if you do it again you can ask him about it he would take a cup. Actually, he'd take this. Uh, yeah, he would take a cup, like a like a solo cup, and you know, it'd have like he put a little pour a little blue Powerade in it, and then he'd pass it around in the audience and let people put cigarettes in it, spit in it, do all kinds of put oh shit, heck all <laughs> kinds of stuff in it, man. And then he'd take it and. He 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 had this huge pump thing that had a tube coming off the bottom of it, almost like a syringe, you know. And uh, uh, he would pour that all that shit in there, and then pour a little more Powerade in it to top it off, and then take that pump and take that hose and stick the hose up Ooh. his down into his stomach, pump the shit down into his stomach. Oh, so the whole thing would go down. You'd see it going down the tube, and he'd stand there holding the thing, tube still up his nose. You walk around, crowd screaming, uh -huh. ah! and then take the thing, pull it back out, Ooh. all up into this thing. So it's mixed with all of his stomach. And I hate to be gross here, but I'm conveying what I saw. And, uh, and so you have this whole tube full of just this crazy looking mixture. Pull it out, pour that into the solo cup, and drink it. <laughs> oh man, I can picture Eric doing that too. Six weeks straight, and so, <laughs> still walking around. This was 2002, and this is 2018 now. So 16 years later, the dude's still walking around healthy. 
Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's doing good. He actually oh. has a band now, Muck Sticky. He really? goes by Lizard Skinner. <laughs> That's great. Yep. I love it. Uh, and we used, to, we used to sing a song when we were out on tour with him, and it was a uh, Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be lizards. Don't let them. Uh, uh, don't let them have forked tongues and sharpen their teeth. So I, I can't remember how it went. So anyways, we changed that whole song around about Lizard Man. I'm going to clip that and send it to him later on Facebook. <laughs> Mothers, don't let your babies grow up to be lizards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll talk to Eric, see if I can get him back on for a video interview instead of audio this time. That'd be dope. Yeah, I'll yeah, get yeah. For it. yeah, have a three-way patch in. That'd be real cool, man. Hell yeah. All right, let's play this movie trailer for I see a bunch right. of people tuning in. So let's uh, do this. If he doesn't break it. Bosh you. Technology was a pain earlier. I should get it this time. Mm. Melissa and Chad says, hey, McSticky. Melissa and Chad? Uh, Melissa and Chad. Chat. What's yeah. up? Melissa in chat. chat. Okay, what up, Melissa? How you doing? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Send peace and love and good vibes your way. Right, here goes the trailer. All right. Oh, I'm just going to start back a little more time. I don't hear it. Wait. <laughs>
I was watching YouTube. <laughs> it's done on our side. That's funny. Cool, I man. Can... Thanks for playing the long one, man. That's kind of, that's, that's... We have a new one. A couple months. Um, but, man, that, that, thanks for playing the long one. I appreciate that. Not a problem. I'll definitely be playing it again at the end of the interview for you. Uh, you know, why don't you pull up the new one if you can? The new one's, uh, it should say like 2018 official trailer. Um, Definitely. It's only like a minute and 40 seconds long, but it, it kind of summarizes the story a little bit better for the audience. Yeah, because I haven't even seen that one, to be honest with you. Yeah, I watched that one a little bit ago. Yeah, we've been we've we've had a bunch of promo clips. We did a cup. We did one where Randy Timberlake, Justin Timberlake's dad, he plays the preacher in the movie. Um, we uh, the pastor. We uh, we had him um, do a a, tra a voiceover on a trailer from from some of his stuff in the movie. But uh, he voiced over, did a voiceover for a trailer. That's Willie Hall from the Blues Brothers that you hear narrating the trailer. Hmm. Um, that trailer you just played in, in, in most of the other trailers. Um, he's uh, the drummer from the Blues Brothers movies. I'm sure you've seen those with Dan Ackler and John Belushi. Yep, that was a good movie. Oh, um, I found opening sequence or opening sequence for the movie. Is that the one? Uh, no, that's a new clip we just played. You you could play that if you would like, but uh, the new one should say. Uh, 2018 official trailer um it should be like right at a minute and 40 seconds long um we like i said we have a bunch of clips so it may be a little maybe a little i have to do a little weed through <laughs> weed through <laughs> i was just gonna say that raz go ahead and take another question while i find this so what would be your favorite scene in the movie Man, uh, that's tough to say. His favorite scene. I haven't been asked that yet. Uh, favorite shot is the shot where it comes over the trees and down into the field, you'll, which you'll see in the opening sequence if you do play that. Um, and um, the uh, favorite scene, I guess, would probably have to be the barn scene you know it's, it's the climax scene um that was a lot of fun to shoot it was really hot and sweaty uh i mean real hot and sweaty we had to run mosquitoes we had to run extension cable all the way to this barn from a house that was probably what about 500 600 feet away maybe maybe more than that. oh wow yeah and we had to shoot the whole thing in reverse to make the lighting be make sense because it's supposed to be starting to get daylight when the whole thing happens and um so that was quite an interesting scene and we had to shoot it in two different parts we had to go back a second time and shoot some more again which made it even more difficult um, to match it all up but it, it all turned out really good man i'm really proud of what we what we did you know um it's it's not a fifty million dollar movie, you know, but we didn't have fifty million dollars, man. You know what I mean? So, right. um, for what we had, I think we we did a, a a hundred times what we had, what the what the resources we had to work with. Most movies that you see, just about any movie that you see, um, that comes out in this fashion, costs several hundred thousand, if not over a million dollars. And uh, we had just a fraction of that to work with, and we we're we we're pretty uh, keep turned out with something pretty good, man. I'm pretty proud of everybody, and uh, it was. You know. I remember when you were doing the fundraiser for the movie. I used to run it through my radio when you're live on uh, your streams. Mm -hmm. I remember you doing. All right, so let's appreciate it. it. No, definitely, man. I'm always here. I, I am honestly. I'm glad to see you still doing music. Um, I've interviewed a. I've actually much sticky. I'm now over seven thousand interviews. On my wow, radio. that's crazy cool, man. A lot of artists I've had on over the years now. Um, but like I was telling Raz, the first time I interviewed you, I think was like six years ago now, and you only had a hundred thousand views on Thingy Thing. Yeah, it, maybe it, maybe two hundred thousand, <laughs> something around there. Now you got two million. That's awesome to see. Yeah, it uh, it's 
you know the the people choose what songs they make popular i don't really promote any song more than the other uh but you know we've been blessed you know people enjoy it and dig it you know that's what i was saying early man if people dig it they'll you know it'll do well so i'm i feel blessed to have been able to make some fun music that people like to laugh at and listen to uh, i hope that some some of them listen to the more you know um the stuff that has messages as well and you know what i mean uh but if not even if they just get a rouse out of it and laugh that's cool by me uh i just want to have you know made people feel good and laugh a little bit while you're on this planet you know this thing don't last forever and it could be a you know it could be any number of things all right so i see you're playing this clip now so I'm yeah sorry. i'm about to hook the sound for it and then we'll play this clip it's a small southern community tucked away i had to restart it here man. technology man i'm just figuring out how to do this kind of stuff on here Lord molasses on a cold disc okay let's redo this Howdy. I'm going to tell you all a story about my hometown. Just shy of 4,000 folks live here. It's a small southern community tucked away in America's heartland. Time here moves slower than molasses on a cold biscuit in December. With nowhere to go and not much to do without driving a long ways, most folks aren't able to move away from here because they just can't afford it. Only time folks leave is when they pass away or when they disappear. My friend Milton owns the local general store and we've worked here together since we got back from the war. You can get most of your daily goods here, as well as bait and tackle. But if you want anything more than that, then you got to drive a good ways into the city of Memphis. That one, that one, that one right there. About 10 years ago, on any given afternoon, you could find the local fishermen and farmers gathered at the food counter. Where they tell stories about big fish that got away and bountiful crops in days gone by. <coughs> Milton's dad had passed the store down to him. And it's always been the what you call part of the town. But for the last few years, there ain't been much of a pulse. Meet Zebo Newton. He's a quirky kind of guy with a big heart living in a small town. He's worked a bunch of different jobs, but hadn't yet found his true calling in life. A lot of folks in town pick on him because he's so different. I mean, look at him. He does make an easy target. But that doesn't stop him from being one of the nicest people you will ever meet. There are definitely some bullies in town that make life tough for old Zebo. Everybody pretty much knows everybody around here, but if you see the Hammerhead family, you best get out of their way. You see, they caused a whole mess of trouble for the last decade or so, terrorizing the town like a pack of wild hyenas. See, they could do whatever they wanted and nobody could stop them. From droughts to floods, this town has seen its share of tough times. But nothing was worse than the dark cloud known as the Hammerheads. Rumors are the Hammerheads had been stockpiling money for years, and they kept it buried out there on their land. Ain't no telling what else is buried beneath the dirt on their property. 
the key to unlocking the mystery of why the Hammerheads ruled this town had been right under everyone's noses all the time. But it would take an unlikely hero to reveal the dark secret hidden just beneath the surface. That summer, everyone's lives would be changed forever. And from what I'm seeing, and I've seen a lot of independent movies, you guys shot that pretty good. It looks like an actual put-together movie. Thank you, man. Uh, I appreciate that. It is an actual put-together movie, man. <laughs> we, uh, I appreciate you saying that, though. We, we definitely worked really hard to make it as, uh, uh, as, re as legitimate as possible, you know? I... I've fortunately had a lot of experience in making videos and things, you know, I did, we did make a movie about five years ago, six years ago. Um, it never got released publicly, but we made an hour long movie. So I had a little bit of experience before in making films and short films and things. So, um, it, but this one, you know, it took a lot of time. I would say I've got upwards of five or six thousand hours into the movie myself personally. Oh, wow. um, oh no! So, so what to you, Mark Sticky, would have been the most difficult scene you had to shoot for this movie? Um, it depends on what you mean by difficult. Well, like taking over and over again, um, it just so you could get it perfect. So multiple shots of it. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I thought you meant as far as like difficult like emotionally. Uh, there's a scene beside the pond where Zebo has a conversation, you know, questioning about life and things like that. And uh, it's a, a scene where he contemplates suicide. To be quite honest, that was kind of difficult. Um, but as far as like physically shooting and taking. Uh, you saw some of the clips and then you saw Zebo get punched by one of the hammerheads and he fell and he rolls down a hill. That whole sequence in the movie where he's getting chased by the hammerhead down that little narrow pathway. That was probably, what do you think, Ricky? That was probably the most difficult. You were, yeah. That was probably the most difficult thing. Uh, I say that because uh for one i had to uh fling myself backwards and fall down a hill you know just like out of control so a little bit of stunt work um the drone chasing you, you know, had to there was a part where the drone was chasing us we had to do a lot of fast running and during one of those shots i don't know if you can see it in that trailer or the the trailer you played a minute ago or the the new i think you can see it in the new trailer but there's a shot where it runs and it, it the the screen goes right through a tree branch like it, it you the camera runs into some trees and then we transition to another shot in there but nice. when that one hit the tree branch i was running in front of the drone and and i heard it so I stopped and turned around and Ricky was flying it and it's the drone started swaying back and forth and there's a pond right there. Ow, I just hit my funny bone. Um, there was a pond right there and I didn't want the drone to fall down the hill and it was kind of like shifting back and forth as he was trying to get control of it, but it was hitting tree branches as it was doing that. And I thought, man, this thing's fixing to fall into the water and we won't have a drone so i reached up and grabbed the drone under the you know bar the landing bar underneath and when i did that the whole thing flipped over and Ooh. one of the drone blades full speed stopped on my arm and man i had a huge welt and it split my arm open right there and uh you still see a little bit of a scar from it but uh that was uh that was pretty difficult uh i had to dive off a bicycle and we did that take six or seven times and speaking of that why don't you tell people about your uh experience with the rattlesnake 
Oh uh, yeah. Um, so we uh, we were shooting some B roll one day, and uh, had the camera on the top of on the hood of the van. And I was riding my bike, and we had just started just started filming, and I got a little bit ahead, and I turned around to to see uh, where where Ricky was in the truck and how far behind me he was. And when I did, I put my feet down and slid to a stop. And when I slid to a stop, I looked back down, and about a foot and a half away from my foot was a baby timber rattler snake rattlesnake and um it uh it, it could have bit me it it didn't bite me and i of course i ran and got the camera and we set it down on the ground and uh did a couple of shots of me riding by him on the bike and got some of his good reactions got a little bit of footage of him slithering and things like that we didn't use all the footage we got but uh it was pretty cool it turned out it was a really neat part of the movie it was very appropriate. My mom had been saying, I want some snakes in the movie. And <laughs> so uh, that I was, I, as soon as we did, I called her. I was like, you're never going to guess what I got. I got a snake. <laughs> so um, I, I hear your mom in the background. How has she been? I am fine. How are you? She's doing good. good. It's been it's years not, since I've talked to you. She's not camera ready. The next time, I, I'm, I'm one of these people, I have to look perfect, you know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> before you do an interview, if I know ahead of time, I'll, I'd like to be on it. Definitely. I would love to have you on. So, um, people can hear, what was the most difficult scene for you in the movie? For me, it was getting hit in the head with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> she has to get hit in the head with a shovel in the movie. We're not going to give anything more away than that, but. <laughs> you watch the movie. I would like to hear your um, your your own review on it too. Oh, definitely. I plan on doing one for sure of the movie. So, Raz, um, why don't you take another question? Uh, one second, brother. Uh, DJ Rain says uh, hi to her and Kevin or Keith or. Having a birthday, so they're watching together, I guess. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you! I think on my next album, it's going to be a whole album of duets with myself. One of them's going to be in the high voice. One of them's going to be in the low voice. It sounds like we're <laughs> singing together, you know? Well, there we go, Raz. I'm going to take a question. I'm going to steal one of yours, man. Um, ahead, Muck Sticky, what is your most favorite song in your discography that you have wrote? What is my favorite song? Um, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. I'll probably answer myself from a guttural perspective and being influenced over here what my, fa what my favorite songs are. I think they're trying to convey what their favorite songs are but i'm gonna have to convey what mine is uh i heard some fans the other day sent me a snapchat and i don't listen to my own music a whole whole lot to be quite honest i i make my music and do what i gotta do with it and i perform it if i have to, you know it shows the things but i don't just sit around listening to it i like listening to other music uh and uh, but I heard somebody, these fans, sent, these girls sent me a thing where they were smoking weed and listening to my song, Pot Smoking. And that, nice. That's probably one of my favorite beats that I've ever made. Uh, it's got kind of, it's the tempo and the groove of it. Uh, are probably, it's, that's probably the favorite beat I've ever made is Pot Smoking. Uh, song that mean things to me? Uh, you know, uh... I'd probably have to say like so long is, a, is probably a meaningful one. Home, my home is in my head, which is a cool little thing in the next week or so. Uh, and uh, number one fan song I did for my mom is probably one of my favorites too. Um, I don't know. Uh, Tuckahaw, that's probably another one of my favorites. 
uh, organic from the last record. That's I've been debating about doing a video for organic, even though that album's like almost two years old. I'm still debating about doing a video for it. <laughs> now here's like a hot seat question. I'm going to take, I'm going to mix this one up because it's normally about music. Um, yeah. if you were to live in a movie for five years, what movie would you want to live in? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. That might be a tough place to live. My mom thinks it'd be off the top, which is my favorite movie, is Sling Blade. But <laughs> I don't know if I would want to live in that environment. While that's my favorite movie, that would probably, I, dude, I probably would kill Dole before Carl does. <laughs> I've spoiled it for you. You should have seen Sling Blade All right, by now. It's like 25 years old. So, uh, Mm, I favorite movie I would want to live in like and so you can do like anything like fantastical <clears throat> movies yep uh, period pieces uh, I don't know let me just think of, let me ponder on that for a second I might have to say uh, I don't know just let me think about that for a minute What's the next question? give me your next question and before by the time I answer that question, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the, the movie. What Before I Before we do that, I got to show you something that I picked up from uh, somebody recently. A vintage toy from 1984 in mint condition, and I got it for $50. I had to buy it. What? You ready for it? Yeah, let me see. Dude, how cool. And oh, turn, turn it down just a little bit. Is that an elf? That's an elf, you know, dude. Yes, that is. That is cool, man. How okay. cool is that, bro? Out. I'm not on these. <laughs> well, by now, the poor Hoover Haven is so upset. He runs out the door before Granny can tell him. He plays cassette tapes. Oh, wow, Ritz. man. It's like the Teddy Ritz. I remember back in the day. that thing, dude. Holy cow. I have not seen that forever, dude. You got that for 50 bucks, man? Yep. I'll give you uh, 75 for it right now. <laughs> heck, I just send it to you to give it to you, man. You oh, you don't have to do that, man. Keep your off, man. Seriously. I won't even mind as I'm long sure as you have it up in the background. <laughs> I'm bad enough. That's funny. That's fucking kind of you to say that, though. I appreciate that. But no, keep your off, dude. That's too, that's too cool to score. Don't ever sell that or anything, uh -uh. man. Keep that $475 online they want for one of those. Yeah, that's that is totally way cool, man. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. That's I'm awesome. thinking about getting one of those cassette tapes and that you plug into um your uh CD player. Yeah, you can take. I can take and I can reverse it. I can run sound out and find a um voice transmitter, whatever they call him, a voice modifier to sound like Elf, and I can set him up to ask artists questions through that cassette tape. Wow, dude, sure. you could ask questions as Elf. That yep. is, dude, I bet what you could do, I guarantee you there's an Elf soundboard. You could, you could go, you could go download those sound bites and put them on a, a, you could even put them on a cassette tape and line yep. them out, or if you had to, or if you do it on a CD too, cool. But uh, you, I bet you could export that to tape, mm -hmm. record that on a tape, and boom, do it that way. That would be really neat. Having yeah, to say the artist names these days. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah the soundboards are. are free. You can just click on each question, you know, or each little thing that you want to say. Man, that'd be hilarious. Right. <laughs> Hell yeah. What do you got for a question, Raz? So, Muck Brother, uh, what inspired you to do the video for the song Goblinly Goop? Uh, what inspired the video for the song Gobbledy Goop? Well, I'm a huge Hunter S. Thompson fan, have been most of my life. Uh, I like his outrageous sense of living. <laughs> I, or, the the sense of living he had he was he lived the extreme you know what i mean and uh uh i'm a huge fan of some of the movies of course uh, uh fear and loathing in las vegas and um 
Uh, we had access to the drive-in. Uh, I, I was watching the movie one night and I, it just, and I had a friend of mine who played that character of Hunter pretty well. And I was watching the movie and I just, it struck me that I could play the, the rotten attorney. And, uh, I just called him up and I was like, Hey man, we need to do this. And we brainstormed, uh, wrote out a script for it, uh, called the place, got it set up for a few days later, uh, went down, filmed it. And it's kind of like one of those, anything else I've ever done creatively, man, I don't realize how it happens until later on. It just, you're just doing it. You know what I mean? You just, you have an idea, you want to be creative and you, I saw a thing going on Facebook the other day. It said something to the effect of artistry is like feeling something and wanting somebody else to feel it and going, damn it, I got to get this out to where other people can feel it the same way I feel it. You know what I mean? And so uh, that's kind of the, uh, and that leads to your other question. I would probably say Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is the movie I would want to live in. <laughs> yeah. it would be fun yeah. i'd say man that video was trippy that you did though especially with the peanut butter come on now <laughs> yeah, we gotta put our own creative twist on it you know for sure I, I, i've always been a big fan of parodies and spoofs you know right. i like a creative twist on somebody else's creative something you know i think it <laughs> that expands on artistry. I've seen people do creative twists on some of my stuff before and I dig it because I think it's an, it's a creative twist, you know, and it's sure. like covering a song or something. And, uh, so, uh, so much know. sticky. I actually used to make for our uh, parodies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got one. If you don't mind me playing it for you, so what you think it's called, it's uh Bruno's Mars. I want to be a millionaire. My version is I want to be a drug dealer. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's hear it. You want to hear it? All right. Yeah. I got to get your opinion on this. You Let me cool. find it. Yep. I mixed it, recorded it, and wrote the words to it. Well, I can't wait to hear this. Can I eat my nutty buddy while you watch it? Uh, yeah, definitely. I can't wait to get your opinion on this. I haven't played it for too many people. Um, I used to do tons of them like six years ago, and then I just stopped making stuff. Here it is. All right. <clears throat> Here we go with the sound again. Oh, you got to be kidding me right now. Oh, it'll probably help if I plugged it in. Yes, I love technology. Yep. Not as much as weed you see. But I still love technology. That's my. I want to be a drug dealer so fucking bad. Buy all the things I've never had. I want to be on the cover of High Time Magazine. Dealing opium in quads. Every time I get high. I see the tunnel at the end of the light. Oh, I swear, a different pipe every other night. Oh, I swear, a prison better prepare for when I'm a drug dealer. Yeah, I will never sell like most of y'all have a going to my whole straw. Every year, Chris says, add this to your draw twist. Because we're going to kill them like Bonnie and Clyde. Adopt a bunch of all and have you sell my shit. Steal a few Mercedes and crash them like one did. Last but not least, think of a body from last week. I spent a couple hundred on Joe and this show. You all can call me Psycho, but you're all a whole ball. Get it? Probably going to hit it like Katrina did. Damn sure do more damage than she did. Yeah, can't Forget about you, stupid. Everywhere I go, I hear circus music. I see the tunnel at the end of the night. Oh, I swear, a different place every other night. Oh, I swear, a prison better to bear when I'm a drug dealer. Yes, yes. When I'm a drug dealer, pills, 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 p
With Jessica drinking on her intelligence, put her down her diligence, washing up his palate again. Never age just for the heck of it. Keep the prize, bitch, because I'm gonna hit you for the heck of it. Keep it like, yeah, be the new sex bracket. Yeah, I never have blue balls again. So take the shit out and just spit it up. So every hole that I got can have a couple drops. And then not a single mommy around me. When no all hunger was, I toss up the salad. I know you don't have a similar dream, but I'll put my wallet up and put it in the air and sing. Wanna be a drug dealer? So fucking bad. Buy all the things I've never had. I wanna be on the cover of High Time Magazine. There you go. What do you think of that? That's dope, man. That's funny shit, man. I had a bunch of them. I used to uh, do shit. Funny as I was, the prison better prepare. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> For when I'm a drug dealer, yep. All right, so let me take another question here. Oh, we got more people finally tuning in. After I forgot, man. We should have. Uh, there's a lot of graduation parties going on tonight. Um, but this will be up for them later when they hop on. So, Muck Sticky, I know the answer to this question. What kind of music did you grow up listening to? And tell people out there, like, who inspired you to do music? Okay, that's a good question. Mm. I grew up listening to all kinds of different stuff. Um, my great-grandparents were traveling gospel bluegrass singers. So I grew up singing and playing a lot of bluegrass. Um, my grandfather was a son studio musician, so I grew up listening to Johnny Cash and Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis and Charlie Rich and all that. Um, then in my teenage years, I started getting into rap music, listened to Two Live Crew and Three Six Mafia and Eight Ball and MJG, a lot of Memphis rap. Um, play a fly and skinny pimp and um then uh over the years uh i just my my i've always been a i've always had broad horizons when it comes to music but um beck is my favorite artist um when i was a real little kid i listened to air supply and Dolly Parton, <laughs> and um, speaking of, I got to see Air Supply about a year ago, and got to meet them and hang out and take pictures and selfies. I got I got a selfie with Air Supply, dude. It's awesome. Y'all y'all may not know who Air Supply is, but like, I grew up on shit. <laughs> nice. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. I oh know yeah. You Yep. Oh yeah, I know that song. Yeah. <laughs> you know Air Supply. Everybody knows Air Supply, whether right. you know you know it. <laughs> true, true story. <laughs> <laughs> so um anyway, uh yeah, man. Uh Matt's cool background you got there. Yeah, I was talking to trying to hit up the lizard man, see if he could hop on. Uh, I don't look like he's on, on online right now. Um, well, I appreciate you guys having me on, man. Let me chat about movies and stuff. And, uh, you know, I want to shout out my whole team, uh, mom and Ricky and, uh, everybody who's in the movie play that play roles, all of our support supporting cast and crew, uh, could not have done it without everybody, everybody that's ordered a DVD or bought it from one of the digital places or something, man. Like, Independent movies are quite a unique thing, man, uh, when it comes to making them. And they all have their own life. Some of them can have greater lives, greater lives if um, they're supported the right way by the right people. And I feel like we have got the best support any independent movie has ever had going into its release. You know, so um, I just want to thank you. Unfortunately, Mark Stucky, um this is a new YouTube channel. Um, I'm banned from YouTube. My main account that's got 1,200 subs. 
I got banned from that one because my co-host come into my room one night and I said my green screen was being happy. I can't say the word. I got hit with a hate crime on YouTube. Okay. So now I got to upload this interview when we get off here to my main account. I can't go live on it for three months when I can upload the video. It, it's pretty much that YouTube's cracking down on some words. Is that a word that you can't say? Yeah. Yep. On YouTube? That's yep. I, I got hit with a hate crime and I wasn't even using it inappropriately. Right. It, 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 it was crazy. Wow. I don't know. It's frustrating because now I'm on a YouTube channel where I've only got 150 subs over to my other one. All my main people are at. So I'm trying to get them over to this one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, yeah, it's a yeah, pain. You know, I've learned to be a little more careful over the years with what I say. You know, I think you can get away with more with recorded stuff than you can mm -hmm. live stuff. Yep. Um, but, you know. And that kind of goes, you know, it kind of goes along with the way the world is shifting anyway. You know, it's like there's a lot of things that we can say that don't make people feel like shit, you know, instead of things that make people feel like shit. You know, I'm not saying you got to go around catering to everybody and you know, is that, that gets their feelings hurt, you know. But at the same time, you know, if it's something that, you know, is just you know, mostly, most of the time going to probably piss people off and you're doing it anyway, you should probably just not do it because mm -hmm. I'm even guilty of some of the stuff, you know, and the things I've said in my songs, you know, you know, for saying things are just, just to get under people's skin, which is okay to be rebellious, not saying you can't be <laughs> rebellious, but right. so don't be a dick, you know, so exactly. and being a dick, I'm just saying, you know, that's how you get in trouble a lot these days and Agreed. In trouble? Is anything wrong? With getting in trouble, man? Because you know we celebrate. All right, homie. Our I'm gonna have you do. Our living makers, but we also celebrate our dead troublemakers. So agreed. Okay. I'm gonna have you do some shout outs. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I appreciate you getting on, man. We've been on for over an hour and a half now. Man, I just enjoyed hanging out with you, man. I agree. Yeah, next time we'll bring mom and Ricky on the whole crew. Uh, Heck yeah. Dang. I'll be back on my main account by then, so it would be a little bit better. Well, now we're starting to get viewers in, of course. Anyone's got any questions? In chat. What's up? If not, if you're watching this afterwards, man, I send you peace and love and good vibes. You know, it's all good. We'll, we'll be around. If not, you can always catch us up later on other, you know, that'd be something that, that keeps on going, you know. Exactly. You can play this live, right? Yep. As soon as we go off, it's automatically there. Cha-ching. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to talk about, Muck Sticky, that we did not cover on this movie? Man, I want to talk about how much I love butterflies. Uh, I saw a zebra swallowtail the other day, and I hadn't seen one since I was a little kid, and it was, it was really cool, man. Never even heard of that kind. <laughs> yeah, beautiful yeah, butterfly, man. And I want to talk about how much I love y'all, and I'm proud of y'all for sticking with it and doing what you're doing, and uh, keeping the thing alive, man. Seven thousand interviews, is that what you said? Over seven thousand now, and climbing. Trey, what's your favorite interview ever? Honestly, yours. I'm not gonna lie; they're That's always good and funny. Either, right? <laughs> Do I lie, Raz? What did I say? Yeah, that's definitely my favorite too. Like I've been I, I, doing them for about five months with him now, and this is my favorite. Oh, y'all are very nice. I, if I didn't think you were just saying that because I was on here, I'd give you a big old hug. But I give you a big old hug anyway. Here you go. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's a big old hug. Yeah, there's the bromance. <laughs> Lakeland Lucy, man, you've never heard of Muck Sticky. I will be dropping the links to his official channel in movie trailer. He is dropping a movie on the 28th called Zebo. Much love yeah. for tuning in, Lakeland. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Peace and love. As well, you know. Uh, honestly, uh, to, I, this, I, to this day, Mark Sticky, doing that Whitney I, Payton. Say what? You and that Whitney Payton interview was awesome. When you came on and started singing her songs and stuff. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that, that was that was really good. Yeah, uh, I'm you know I'm gonna have to go catch up and see how see what's up with that with her lately. She toured with Twisted for a year. That's good for her. I'm glad to hear that. That's probably good. probably did pretty well for her then. She's probably oh, yeah. a pretty good solid fan base with that. Are y'all going to the what it's called? What's it? They calling it Whoopstock or gather. something? The gathering. The new gathering, yeah. Yeah, I want to go, but unfortunately, I got to work. Um, Raz, are you going? You said you might. Uh, I'm supposed to, but it's hard for me to find a ride. My first ride kind of fell through. So I still oh. gotta find a way to get there so I can help work with the pendulum stage. I just remembered this, Muck Sticky. Um, there is now Underground Wicked Radio South, too. Um, oh, yeah? Raz is running it. Yep. So we have Underground Wicked Radio North and South now. Hey. Uh, Groovy, man. That is rad, bro. Do you mind doing a shout out for Underground Wicked Radio South? And I'll cut it out for Raz for getting your music up on his radio station. Sure. Yeah, for sure, my man. <clears throat> Yo, uh, I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little high, man. Sorry. Yo, yo, what up? It's Mark Sticky, baby. You listen to Underground Wicked Radio South with my man Raz. Oh, yeah. Stay lifted, homie. <laughs> there you go, Raz. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you over some music for you to uh, put up on your radio. For sure. All right, homie. Any, uh, anything else you want to talk about? I don't want to take too much more of your time. Man, I appreciate you guys. Have a good evening, man. We'll talk to you guys again soon. And, uh, man, enjoy the movie. Hope y'all dig it, man. Leave us a review if you do. Oh, I definitely will. I can't wait. All right. Peace and love, man. Peace and love. We'll talk Stay to y'all. Stay lifted. Stay lifted. Toodaloo.